You struggling for grip on your flat pedals? Thinking of turning to the clips? Well, don't. Hold off of that devilish thought. Well, because today I'm going to share with you some great tips on how you can get more grip on your flat pedals. So sit back, take it easy, and let's dive into some trails and see what we can do. Let's start with the pedal itself then, as that's, well, as good a spot as any. Now, at the channel, we use Crank Brothers and I opt for the Stamp 7. They're slightly concave in the middle and are a nice large platform for my foot to sit on. What have I done to get more grip out of this pedal then? I hear you screaming away. Well, fear not, I'm gonna tell you. What I've actually done is swap out the stock pins that come on it, the shorter pins, and put in a longer pin set all around the edge of the pedal there. Now, what that does is basically those longer pins are gonna sit deeper into the tread on the bottom of the shoe and stop my foot from sort of skipping and jumping around, giving me more grip. Now, not only do those longer pins sit better into the tread of your shoe, so giving you more grip that way, but actually when the going gets rough and your foot's sitting on top of that pedal, because your foot is sitting sort of more planted on those pins, it's gonna take more force or more movement when the going gets rough to dislodge your foot. So giving you more grip that way as well. Now, when you do buy a set of pedals, a lot of the time they will come with actual different pins, so you can choose which you want to run. If that isn't the case, well then, there are aftermarket kits available for a lot of pedals as well. So you can kind of pick and choose and really customize that pedal to get it perfect for your shoe. A pedal is not just a pedal. And although sometimes taken for granted it is just a place we rest our foot and smash it around off rocks and God knows what else, like clippy pedals, there are differences in flats. I've got two flat pedals here, and although they both look very similar, they are actually quite different. Although the same similar design and similar construction, you can see there's an obvious size difference in them. Why have they got two different sizes? I hear you wondering. Well, it's so that you can choose which one you want to run, uh, depending upon what shoe size you are. So for me, I'm a size 10, uh, and I prefer the slightly larger platformed pedal. Blake, I know he's a size eight, he's got little feet. He runs the actual smaller ones just because they feel a bit more comfortable for him. Now, the reason for this is so that when my big old tens are on top of this larger pedal, uh, they're not gonna slip off too easily. I can feel the edges and I've got a nice stable platform, like I said. If I was on top of this smaller pedal, well then I'd have a lot of shoe hanging over the edge and it would just give me more chance of slipping a pedal and that is never a good thing. This is a no-brainer, don't use a trainer. Flat pedals have developed a load over the years and so therefore flat pedal shoes have as well. So you no longer need to use your discount Nikes because you didn't want to get your best ones grubby. Now, back in the day, we would use a skate shoe uh, because they were pretty solid, they were well padded and they had a flat sole, but sometimes they weren't the grippiest. So nowadays, specific mountain bike flat pedal shoes are way better and there's way more to choose from. But what is the best kind to use? And well, I use something like this, the Shimano GR7. It's a flat pedal specific shoe and it's got a few cool features on it which really set it apart. So the inside is slightly higher on your ankle to stop you clattering it against the cranks or the frame or anything like that. Uh, the toe is solid rubber to stop you stubbing your toe because well, that's always painful. Lace up which tuck under this little elastic strap here as well and the material on it uh, as with most flat pedal shoes, is uh, sort of really hard wearing and tough as well. Uh, finally, this one's got a little neoprene cuff just to help keep the loose crap when you go surfing through all that loam, it ain't gonna go filling up the inside of your shoe. Uh, you can get cheaper shoes, so something like this, the GR5. There's tons of different shoes out there uh, and it's well worth shopping around to see what suits you best. The sole of your shoe is really, really important as it should be the only thing, hopefully, that touches your pedal. So it's well worth putting some good thought into it. Now, lots of manufacturers out there will use different rubber compounds. So the uh, softness or the tackiness of the rubber used, and that's gonna affect how well it bites into those pedals. The stickier the rubber, the more the pins are gonna bite into that sole and the less likely your foot is gonna slip. Watch out, minders, this can be a bit of a double-edged sword. Some shoes out there have really, really soft rubber soles. So when those pins really bite into it, you can actually find that you can't really move your foot about too well. 
And you'll notice when you ride that your foot might sort of just move about and have a bit of float in it almost. If it grips too much, uh, well then that's not going to happen and actually can get you into a bit of trouble because you can't move your foot around to reposition your body weight. So just be careful on that one. Finally, take a look at the pattern that's on the bottom of the shoe. As you can see on this one, it's got lots of nice grooves and lines and what that allows is for the pins to really dig in there and bite. Anything that's too smooth or slick along the bottom here and it's really not going to allow the pins to dig in and so therefore you're just going to skip across the top. So really check that out, have a look at the sole and get something that's going to work for you. What about how you actually ride on a set of flats then? Is there anything you can do there to improve your grip? What about technique? Well, actually, yes, there is. And we're gonna delve a little bit deeper into that now and look at what you can do with regards to foot placement and riding style to really improve that. Firstly, let's talk foot placement on the pedal itself then, because there's a few do's and don'ts here. Now, to start with, you don't wanna have that pedal right underneath the toes of your foot because it's gonna cause your calves to cramp for a start, but also it's gonna start trying to shift your weight really far forwards all the time. And it's gonna make it very difficult to move it backwards. Uh, also, if you slip a pedal because you are so far on your toes there, well, there's only one place that that pedal's going and it's straight up your shins. And I can assure you that's not very fun. The same then can be said for having your foot too far forwards on the pedal so that your heel is sitting right on that flat. Uh, again, it'll make it very difficult for you to shift your body weight around and also the chances of slipping a pedal are much higher as well. And again, that is not fun, I promise. Aim then so that roughly the ball of your foot is sitting above the axle of the pedal. That way you can tilt uh, your foot backwards and forwards to shift your body weight around should you get something steep or technical uh, and also your foot when it does start to jump around it's got more room for manoeuvre so it's not easily going to fly forwards or backwards it's the best place for it. Once you've got your foot placement dialed then the next thing I hear people complaining about is that their feet are just shaking off all the time over rough terrain so how are we going to adapt our foot placement or technique here if you like well we're going to drop our heels that way the heel's going to drop we're going to shift our weight slightly back so anytime that we come over some rough terrain or steep terrain the forces are almost going directly back through our feet and through our legs, pushing against the pedal, keeping it all a nice straight line. That way, uh, you know, if it's, if it's in a straight line pushing this way, you're all good. If your feet's flat and you're pushing that way, that's what's gonna cause your feet to skip forwards or backwards and come off of the pedals. Oh, that's a wrap then from me today on some tips on how to get more grip on your flat pedals. Thank you very much for watching everybody. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, as always, if you want to see more GMBN, then hit the old subscribe button and I'll catch you later. Thanks everyone.